In this video, I'll be showing you how Juniper Network's Control Enterprise Multicloud can automate the configuration of a data center network fabric when using Nutanix, Acropolis Hypervisor, and the Prism Management Tool. We'll be using the Nutanix Prism Management Interface to create networks and uh, then create virtual machines and attach those virtual machines to those networks. Contrail will be listening to events from Prism and then configuring the network appropriately. This is a diagram of the topology we'll be using for the demo. So on the top you can see that we have two devices that are spine devices. Uh, we have two devices that are layer 2 leaf devices. Now these are configured in an IP fabric with EVP and VXLAN enabled on them and uh, the whole thing is is managed by Contrail. Underneath the LEAF devices you can see three Nutanix servers which are multi-homed in an active-active fashion. I'll be creating virtual machines on these servers where two of the servers will be in the same green subnet and then the third virtual machine will be on a separate subnet called RED. When the virtual machines have been created, we'll be attempting to send traffic between them, both within the green subnet and also across subnets. Let's start by looking at the current configuration on the leaf switches. You can see that uh, there is a VLAN there called Control Cluster, and that's needed because that's where the control servers that are managing the entire fabric are connected. Otherwise, it's empty on the VLANs and the uh, Contrail system hasn't pushed any configuration to the apply groups. Let's do the same thing on the Contrail side. So we'll log into the Contrail command user interface. Uh, we'll click down into the fabrics and check out the uh, leaf switches here as well. Now looking at the physical interfaces here, uh, you can see that it's empty uh, when it comes to the Ethernet segment identifier field and also on the logical interface side you can see there are no VLANs in that column. It'll be easier to see when we have some actual configuration. And looking at the switch 2 you can see the same thing. It looks quite empty there. Let's do the same thing on the virtual network side. So we'll go in here we we'll click virtual networks and we can see we have two networks here green and red and if you look at the columns instances and interfaces they are zeroed out so there's nothing there currently and logical routers is something we'll be using as well and you can see that this page is empty right here now I need to log into the Nutanix management tool prism And let's see what hosts we have. You can see that we have three servers, Nutanix Server 7, 8, and 9. So those will be hosting our virtual machines. Let's go ahead and look at the virtual machines in the system. I prepared two virtual machines with a web server and a client already that I can clone, which makes it easier for the demo itself that you can see here on the top. Before we start creating virtual machines, we need networks for them to connect to. So I'll click Networks and ne Virtual Networks, Create Networks, and let's start creating the VLAN red here. I'll give that a VLAN ID of 102. And we'll also be using Nutanix internal DHCP service. So let's uh, uh, put the network information in here and also create a pool from which the server will offer IP addresses. Okay, we're done now. That looks about right. Save that one. Let's create another one called green. Give that a VLAN ID of 101. And let's do the same thing with the IP subnet. Let's give that 10.255.101 instead. And create a pool for the DHCP server to offer IP addresses from. All right. And save that one. And we're done with the creating our networks. Now that we have our networks created, let's go ahead and create some virtual machines. And like I said, I'll be cloning some of these. 
So uh, this virtual machine is a pre-prepared web server. So I'll be uh, putting one of these on the network green. I'll choose an adapter on the green network, save that, and clone another one. This will be a uh, another web server that we'll be putting on the red network. Let's add a nick to that on the red network. There we go. And save that one. And finally, let's create a desktop client that we can use to browse to these web servers from. And adding that one to the GREE network. And we're done. Now to make sure that these virtual machines all spawn on separate servers, we need to assign affinity. So let's put this one on server 7. Let's take the next web server and make sure that that one is on server 9. And the last one, the client, let's put that one on server 8 in the middle there. I'll power on the servers now and make sure that they are spawned on the correct Nutanix server. So now you can see that uh, they are on 7, 8, and 9. Let's look at the control user interface on virtual networks now. And we can see that the red and green network have the columns instances and interfaces, and they are no longer zero. So something has happened here. Let's go over to fabrics and check out the uh, physical hardware again on the leaf devices and see what's happened here. Now you can see that uh, we have Ethernet segment identifiers configured on these ports, and that's used in eVPN for multi-homing. And likewise, on these ports, you can see VLANs populated for the specific red and green VLANs that we are using. Now, the same thing on Switch 2, of course. And again, VLAN ID 101 and 102 are on these interfaces. Now, let's again check the Leaf Devices configuration. Now, doing a show VLAN here, we can see that uh, we have some more VLANs populated and some more interfaces. The AE interface there is the aggregated Ethernet interface. And if we look at the configuration here, we can see that port 37 is part of AE103 in the middle of the screen on the left. And the same configuration has been applied on the LEAF2 device as well. So Contrail has pushed configuration to these devices to configure those VLANs on the ports. Now that we have the configuration, let's see if we actually have connectivity. I'm launching the console for the web client. Let's move that a little bit over here. Make sure we can see the left side where you can see the IP addresses. Launch Firefox and try to browse from this web client NetGreen to the web server NetGreen. And that works. Let's try it to the web server NetRed the IP address of that one in here and oh that doesn't work. Now why is that? If we take a look at the uh, topology diagram again we can see that we have two subnets one green and one red. Now the greens can communicate with each other within that subnet but from green to red it's not possible because we haven't enabled any routing yet. Now to do that we need to create a logical router is actually a virtual router instance inside the spine devices. Now before we do that, let's make sure there's no configuration in the spine devices. So we're looking at routing instances in both spines here, and there's nothing there at the moment. To create that logical router, we go into logical routers in the control command user interface. Click create and give it a name my logical router. I'll choose the devices that I want this routing to happen on and between which networks I want the routing to happen and create it. Now I can of course create multiples of these if I have many networks. 
It's time to check if it works. Let's try it again. And we can see that communication from this client is working between both subnets 102 and 101. And a quick look at the spine devices reveals that Contrail has now pushed some configuration to the device. You can see that there's an instance type VRF there and some interfaces. Looking at spine 2, the same thing there. There's also some eVPN configuration there. Now I'll be showing you a short demonstration of virtual machine migration between two Nutanix hosts. Of course, networking needs to be in place on these hosts for the virtual machine migration to work. We cannot have a virtual machine migrate to a different host and there's no network in place already. So this again shows the automation done by Contrail for the Nutanix system. For this demonstration, I've created a web client on the RED network. And we'll be launching that console here and running some pings while we're doing a virtual machine migration. On the left-hand side, you can see the IP addresses I'll be using, and you can also see what physical hosts the virtual machines are located on at the moment. This uh, virtual machine has this IP address on the 102 network, so let's start with pinging something on that same network, and that seems to work well. Now let's ping something on a different network, the 101 network, dot 83, that you can see is on Nutanix server 8 at the moment. Now pay attention to what host it's on while I migrate this virtual machine to a different host. It's on 8 now and I will choose 7 for it to migrate to. Migrate and let's look at this number here and look at the ping at the same time. Now change server right there to server 7. Looking at the pings, nothing major happened. Now let's migrate it back to server 8 again and keep an eye on the ping. And there we go. Migration of machine twice, back and forth, without any connectivity loss. Thanks for watching.